Pandora and the Mystery Box, written by Sally Grindley, illustrated by Nilesh Mystery. Back at the beginning of time, after the creation of man, came Pandora, the first woman on earth. She is blessed by the gods with the dazzling gifts of beauty, charm and honesty. But is Pandora all that she seems? When a messenger arrives with a closed box and asks her to look after it, but never to open it, can Pandora's curiosity withstand the temptation? Surely one little peep wouldn't hurt. This is a map of the ancient Greek world and as you can see it extends from Greece all the way across the Middle East into uh, right across uh, into uh, India and Pakistan so it's huge and this is Greece as we know it today but it extended into Egypt and all the way across. There's an introduction first. The English word myth comes from the Greek word mythos. Mythos has two meanings. The first is explanation and the second is story. The myths of ancient Greece began as explanations of how the world began and how things became as they did. Stories soon grew around the explanations to make them memorable. One of the first, the most well-known stories is that of the first woman in the world, the beautiful Pandora. Her name Pandora means all gifted because of the great gifts such as beauty and charm given to her by the gods. The story begins right back at the beginning of time when there was no, when there was nothing, no earth, no sky, no sea, no sun, no moon, no night, no day. The tiny specks of life swirled in an endless chaotic dance like dust particles in sunlight. Then shapes began to appear as the larger specks rose upwards and the heavier specks sank down. The specks of life shifted and changed and slowly settled to form Mother Earth called Gaia and the sky called Uranus. Together, Gaia, Gaia and Uranus created the first rulers of the earth, gigantic gods called the Titans, who in turn gave birth to a higher race of gods. But the Titans and the gods soon began to argue with each other. The gods, led by Zeus, forced the Titans to the furthest ends of the earth and made themselves a new home on Mount Olympus. Here, Zeus took on the master of the world. So this is the part of the, the, um, the, the mythological sort of history that we haven't covered. We've sort of touched on a little bit when we did Atlantis, uh, but this does go back into the Titans, these gigantic gods that preceded the Olympians. Prometheus was a Titan, but the gods liked him and allowed him to roam the earth and skies freely. One day, he dug up some clay from the ground and began to shape it into tiny statues. The goddess Athene was so delighted with the statues that she breathed breath into the life into them, and they began to scuttle about around Prometheus's feet like little matchstick men. Prometheus was thrilled with his creation, and when Mother Earth gave him a sack of a sack of gifts to divide among all living creatures, he let his brother Epimetheus share them out. Epimetheus had great fun giving the elephant its trunk, the wasp its sting and the crab its shell. He gave cunning to the fox, speed to the cheetah and agility to the monkey. But soon the sack was empty and he had nothing left for Prometheus's little men. Prometheus was devastated. Fool, he cried, do you never think ahead? He watched his tiny naked beings scurrying to and fro with no idea how to free, feed themselves and to keep themselves warm. I must do something or they'll die, he thought. And with that, Prometheus wrapped himself up in a cloak of shadows 
and set off on a terrifying mission to steal fire from the gods. He made his way to the forge on Mount Olympus to seize a seizing a burning coal and escaped unseen. So there's the forge where he got the fire from and he's stolen the he's stolen the fire. The gift of fire changed the life of mankind. With the heat and light it gave them, they could make tools, cook food, and hunt and build homes. From small from the small spark of knowledge they it lit, they soon developed a thousand skills, and the men were ha happy in their earthly paradise. When he saw what had happened, Zeus was livid. How dare they steal the secrets of the gods, he raged. I will make them regret the day they were born. And so Zeus created Pandora. She will be so perfect that no one will be able to resist her, he said to the other gods. And one by one they gave her the gifts of beauty, grace charm, energy, wit, passion, tenderness, charity and faithfulness. Then Zeus commanded his messenger to take Pandora to Prometheus. As quick as lightning, the messenger brought her to Prometheus' side. I bring you this gift of beauty from the gods, he said, and he disappeared in a flash. Prometheus looked at Pandora and was enchanted by her, but he made himself turn away. This must be a trick, he cried. I have done nothing to deserve this gift. When his brother Epimetheus saw Pandora, he fell in love with her instantly. And although Prometheus warned him to send her away, Epimetheus was determined to keep her. Epimetheus and Pandora spent their first days together like two lovebirds, never leaving each other's side and enjoying life as though they had never experienced it before. Then one evening, the messenger arrived carrying a heavy box. Could I leave this with you? he asked. It's weighing me down and I have work to do. Epimetheus was only too happy to help. I'll collect it shortly, said the messenger, but whatever you do... Don't open it. Pandora was filled with curiosity. As soon as the messenger had gone, she asked, What do you think is in it? Can't we have a look? Good gracious, no, said Epimetheus. It isn't ours to open. But when Epimetheus left her on her own, Pandora went straight to the box and ran her fingers over it. She thought she'd heard whispers coming from inside the box. Oh, a little peep wouldn't do any harm, she thought to herself. If I'm quick, no one will ever know, she decided. And with that, she opened the lid. Whoosh! Tiny creatures flew, thousands of them, into the room, hissing and spitting. They stung her and then they bit Epimetheus when he came back into the room. What have you done? He screamed at Pandora as the creatures whirred out of the house and stung every human they encountered. For the first time in their lives, Pandora and Epimetheus felt pain. For the first time ever, they felt sadness and despair. Pandora wept at the evil she had let loose on mankind. But Epimetheus thought he heard a voice. He peered into the box and trapped in a corner, a tiny creature was calling. Set me free and I will heal your wounds. Epimetheus carefully freed the creature and it danced around the room and it fluttered out of the window and lightly touched every human it met. This tiny creature was hope, and its mission was to heal the damage caused by all the evil spirits. For wherever there was hope, there was the possibility of happiness.